evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome to the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Selection Show. Just a short while ago, the selection committee finished up this year's tournament brackets. 32 teams received an automatic bid. 36 await an at-large. Joining me now to help us reveal the 68-team field, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis, all kinds of storylines in play. What are the biggest questions? Well, I think number one seed, how did the Michigan State win in the Big Ten Championship impact the one and two seed lines? Also, which bubble teams got in and did not? And then I'm really curious about Wofford and Buffalo. How will they be seeded in this year's tournament? I only know one thing for certain right now. No one wants to hear me talk. Let them know what's going on. <laughs> All right. Without further delay, let's begin the reveal. Here are the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champion, Capital One. To no one's surprise, the overall number one seed is Duke with the Blue Devils playing in the East region. The Blue Devils, the 14th time they're a number one seed. They're first since 2015. Four of their five titles came as a number one seed. So the number one seed overall, the Duke Blue Devils. Now, first and second round games in Columbia, South Carolina on Friday and Sunday. Duke will play the winner of the first four game in Dayton on Wednesday between North Carolina Central's Eagles out of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and North Dakota State's Bison out of the Summit League. They, the winner of that game will be the 16th seed going against Duke. Moving on down, the number eight seed in the East out of the Atlantic 10, the Rams of VCU. They won their first outright Atlantic 10 regular season championship. They will play University of Central Florida Knights out of the American Athletic Conference. They return to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2005. Now, these games to be played first and second round in San Jose on Friday and Sunday. The fifth seed in the East region, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Bulldogs have eight quad one wins. Those are wins against quality teams based on location. And the Bulldogs, a number five seed, seems to go well with their demeanor right now. <laughs> you betcha. Who are they going to play? They're going up against the Liberty Flames out of the Atlantic Sun. They won a share of the regular season Atlantic Sun title with Lipscomb and then went on to defeat Lipscomb in the tournament finals. Continuing, the second team out of the Atlantic Coast Conference is Virginia Tech. The Hokies, the number four seed in the East, three straight NCAA tournament appearances for the first time in school history. as can be, and uh, they're going to face the Billikens of St. Louis, the number 13 seed, and the second team out of the Atlantic 10. So it'll be Virginia Tech against St. Louis. First and second round matchups in Jacksonville, Florida on Thursday and Saturday. The number six seed in the East, the Terrapins of Maryland out of the Big Ten. Coach Mark Turgeon has the fourth youngest team in Division I. They will play the winner of the first four game in Dayton, Ohio on Tuesday between Belmont the Bruins from the Ohio Valley and from from the American Athletic Conference Temple. And they should be happy. Everybody <laughs> should be happy that Belmont got in. They deserve to get in. Kudos for, from the committee to for uh, reaching out to them. And also, how about Fran Dunphy yeah, last year at yes, Temple yes. making the NCAA tournament? That's a lot a of happy with those teams. Yes, sir. All right, the number three seed in the East, the second team out of the SEC, the LSU Tigers. They still have to deal with off-court situations with their coach, Will Wade, Tony Benford filling in as the uh, head coach, the uh, interim head coach. They will meet the Yale Bulldogs from the Ivy League. They want a share of the regular season title with Harvard, then went on to beat the Crimson in the Ivy League tournament championship game. Now, first and second round action in Des Moines on Thursday and Saturday will feature these teams. The number seven seed, Louisville, the third team out of the Atlantic Coast. Boy, Jordan Wara led the Cardinals in scoring and rebounding. He'll be on display, and they will go up against the second team out of the Big Ten Conference, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Coach Richard Pitino saw his team upset second seed Purdue in the Big Ten tournament before losing to Michigan in the tournament semifinals. And the last teams, the last teams in the East, the third team out of the Big Ten, Michigan State Spartans, and what a gutsy, gutsy performance they put on in the Big Ten Championship. It sure was, and maybe a little bit of a surprise to some people that they 
uh, are not the number one seed, so they end up on the two line, which means if you're North Carolina, Tennessee, or Gonzaga, you're feeling a little bit better about your chances. Not all of them will be one seeds, but Michigan State obviously will not be. And nobody's playing better than the Spartans. All they've gone through, the way they've performed to win a conference regular season championship and conference tournament championship, outstanding. All right, who do the Spartans take on? Out of the Missouri Valley Conference, the number 15 seed, Bradley Braves. They beat Northern Iowa to win their first Missouri Valley Conference tournament title in 31 years. They come in with a 9-9 conference record, 20-14 and 14 overall. They will meet Michigan State. So, take a look at that bracket and tell me what you see. Well, I see a team in... In, uh, well, you take a look at Duke, obviously, but VCU, the eight, nine games are always intriguing. But this Liberty team, I've watched the Liberty Flames for, for all season long. They shoot the three. They're balanced. They're aggressive. That will be a challenging matchup for Mississippi State. Why waste time? Liberty beats Mississippi State. That's my first <laughs> upset pick. How about a potential Duke-Virginia um, Tech Sweet 16 matchup? That would be an ACC rematch from the regular season. Remember, Virginia Tech beat Duke when they didn't have Zion, and Virginia Tech's going to be at full strength uh, with their point guard Justin Robinson and then I think hopefully we are destined for a Duke Michigan State regional final that would be a, a terrific treat watch out for y'all I know you, you love those oh I Bulldogs. really like the Bulldogs dangerous yeah. 14 C. what do you think outstanding scoring team average 80 points a game five guys average double digits they've got size and then Mieone Mieone they've got one of the outstanding scores and players in college basketball. That'll be a tough test for LSU. I also think Belmont gets Temple and Maryland. All right, guys, you can play the official bracket game of NCAA March Madness. The Capital One NCAA March Madness bracket challenge is almost ready for your picks. Get your bracket started at NCAA.com or in the March Madness live app. Dozens of teams across the country waiting anxiously to see where they'll go, who they're going to be playing, including the defending national champions, Villanova. And for some, if they even make it into the field of 68. Order of the field is set. When the selection show continues, we will reveal the South Region. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Selection Show is sponsored by AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. Capital One. What's in your wallet? And by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Great taste, zero sugar. Welcome back to the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Selection Show. Let's now focus our attention on the upper right quadrant. Continue to reveal the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champion, Coca-Cola. The second overall number one seed is Virginia. The Cavaliers are going to the South Region. It's the seventh time they have been a number one seed. We know what happened to them last year. They'll try not to, not to repeat. Anticipating a much longer stay in this year's tournament for the Cavaliers. All right, so... The number one seed in the South is Virginia. These first and second round games will take place in Columbia, South Carolina on Friday and Sunday. The Cavaliers are the fourth team out of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and they will meet 16th seed Gardner-Webb. The running Bulldogs out of the Big South will beat Radford in the Big South Tournament Final. I think they're up for the game. They are up for the game. They've got a terrific player in David Effiani. He's outstanding. A freshman, Jose Perez. This team worked their way through road games in the conference tournament to win the opportunity to be in the field, and they are tough-minded and fun to watch. Congrats to the running Bulldogs of Gardner-Webb. All right, the 8-9 game in the South. The third seed out of the Southeastern is the Rebels of Ole Miss. Coach Kermit Davis, in his first year at Ole Miss, named SEC Coach of the Year. They will meet out of the Big 12, the Oklahoma Sooners, the number nine seed, six NCAA tournament appearances in the last seven seasons. Probably on the friendly side of the bubble, so not a surprise, but one of those power conference teams that was under 500 in its league, we'll see when we find out the second first four pairing, how they divvied up between the power conferences and the mid-majors. All right, these are first and second round games in San Jose on Friday night and Sunday. The fourth team out of the Big Ten, the Badgers of Wisconsin. Ethan Happ, 16th player in Big Ten history, to be a three-time first-team All-Big Ten selection, helps lead the way for the Badgers. They will meet the Oregon Ducks, the number 12 seed, the first team in our brackets here tonight, out of the Pac-12. Oregon returns in four games in four days to capture the Pac-12 tournament champion. And very impressive in that championship win over Washington. All right, moving on down. The second team out of the Big 12, Kansas State, the Wildcats, who won a share of the Big 12 regular season title. 
25 and 8 on the season and 14 and 4 in the Big 12. Not sure if Dean Wade's going to be able to go. You see him right there, bottom right, with that boot on his foot. Be interesting to see if he has a chance. He actually missed the tournament, part of the tournament last year as well. They will play the number 13 seed out of the Big West. UC Irvine's Anteaters. They win the Big West regular season title and tournament title, and Clark Kellogg likes them a lot. I really do. I like the way this team defends and rebounds. They play an aggressive style, but they're efficient at the offensive end. The Anteaters are positioned to do some damage this season. All right, we move on down the South Region bracket. These are first and second round games to be played in Hartford on Thursday and Saturday. First team out of the Big East on our board, the number six seed, Villanova Wildcats. Coach Jay Wright in his 16th NCAA tournament. Three straight Big East tournament titles. They edged out Seton Hall, won the Big East regular season title as well. So the Villanova Wildcats all set to make an appearance in Hartford beginning on Thursday. They will go up against the 11th seed, St. Mary's Gales out of the West Coast Conference, who upset the nation's number one team, Gonzaga, to win the West Coast Conference Tournament Championship. And the Gales don't look like they're finished quite yet. So if you're looking for bubble teams, they usually go into the 11 and the 12 seeds, but we've got two conference champions there in St. Mary's and Oregon. So it doesn't look like, look like this is a uh, bubble mystery revealed in this region. Mm. All right, the number three seed. And the fifth team out of the Big Ten, the Purdue Boilermakers, who won a share of the Big Ten regular season title. They come into the NCAA tournament having won 14 of their last 17 games. Outstanding job this season by Matt Painter and his staff. They will take on the number 14 seed Monarchs of Old Dominion out of Conference USA. Conference USA regular season and tournament champions. Now to first and second round games in Columbus, Ohio on Friday and on Sunday. Our third team out of the American Athletic Conference, the Bearcats of Cincinnati. They won the American Athletic Conference tournament title, beating top seed Houston. I can't believe Cincinnati is a seventh seed. That is very low, especially considering their win today. All right, they will take on the Iowa Hawkeyes, another team out of the Big Ten. The Hawkeyes 22 and 11 on the year, 10 and 10 in a very tough Big Ten conference. Going back to that Cincinnati comment, I don't think they'll mind heading to Columbus, though. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> You'll make them feel welcome, I'm sure. Now, the number two seed in the South, the Tennessee Volunteers out of the SEC, our fourth team out of the SEC. Coach Rick Barnes did a heck of a job this year and came, fell a little bit short in the SEC title game. Yeah, listen, I think they still deserve to be a one seed. They, their losses compared to the other one seed candidates were not nearly as bad. They beat Gonzaga and Kentucky twice, but they're going to be uh, a very tough out. And that certainly clarifies the number one seed picture for those following closely. And who are they going to face? The 15th seed in the South out of the Patriot League, the Raiders of Colgate, who won the Patriot Patriot League tournament title. Oh, look at that excitement. 11 straight wins for the Raiders. They've got a dynamic point guard in Jordan Burns and also Rapolis Ivanowskis, a big-time, versatile wing player for them. This is a team that's got great momentum going into the tournament. All right, so we go back to the top and we do our review. Villanova, you think they come into this tournament with a bit of a purpose? Tell you what, what a job Jay Wright did when you talk about what they lost from a year ago, the leadership of Pascal and Booth, really a huge part the development of their young players to win both regular season and conference championships. Again, remarkable work, outstanding effort by the Wildcats. Historically, you look for the 12 seeds and the 13s to pull first round upsets and I think that's what happens uh, here. I think Oregon beat Wisconsin and UC Irvine, you talked about Dean Wade uh, being hurt for Kansas yeah. State, so they're uh, a little bit uh, in a weak spot there. So I like those two teams. Well, 12s are 16 and 24 in the last 10 years in this tournament. That's All right, let's slide on to the second half of the South Region bracket. We talked about Villanova and Purdue with a little something to prove. Yeah, definitely. This Old Dominion team has won a number of close games. They've got a dynamic duo and um, Ahmad Caver and also B.J. Stith. But I like what um, Purdue is capable of doing. Good size up front and Carson Edwards is dynamic. A couple of geographic quirks. If it's Villanova and Purdue, Purdue is the higher seeded team, but the game is in Hartford. A little bit of a, a home court advantage. And you talked about Cincinnati and Columbus. If they get Tennessee in the second round, Cincinnati's already hard enough to beat without all those uh, Bearcat fans <laughs> flooding your hometown. So that's an interesting wrinkle in the 
geography. All right, guys, we have several teams still on edge awaiting their fate, including the Mountain West champions, Utah State, along with Wofford and Gonzaga, Murray State, as well as the Mid-American Conference champs, Buffalo and Marquette. The field is almost set. That means it's time for brackets. Play with friends and compete for a trip to next year's Final Four. Download the CBS Sports app to start playing now. Look at a few teams happy to be in the big dance. Coming up, we'll reveal the Midwest region when the selection show continues live here on CBS. Welcome back to Studio 43 here in New York City. We're halfway through our unveiling of the 68 team field. For the other half, we now move to the lower right quadrant. And our continue our reveal of the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champion, AT&T. The third overall number one seed is North Carolina. The Tar Heels are going to the Midwest region. And for the 17th time, it's the most all time that any school has been a number one seed. And by the way, all three of Roy Williams' titles came as a number one seed. And the Tar Heels have shown themselves to be a worthy opponent every time they take the floor this year. These are first and second round games in Columbus, Ohio on Friday and on Sunday. North Carolina's Heels, the number one seed. They'll take on the 16th seed, Iona Gales, out of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. They won the MAC Tournament Championship. The first team out of the Mountain West is our number eight seed. Utah State's Aggies, who won the Mountain West Tournament title. Sam Merrill, the Mountain West Player of the Year. We saw, yes, they're potent. Oh, they are really potent. They can score. They're excellent defensively and on the glass. And they bring it for 40 minutes every time. I tell you, Sam Merrill's one of the outstanding all-around guards in the country. He scores it, he passes it, and he's an underrated defender as well. They're an eight seed. Who's the nine seed they're going to take on? Out of the Pac-12, the Washington Huskies. 26-8 and eight on the year. They won the Pac-12 regular season and title moved on to the Pac-12 tournament finals before losing to Oregon but the Huskies 15 and 3 in the Pac-12 on the year now first and second round games to take place in Salt Lake City on Thursday and on Saturday the fifth team out of the SEC the Auburn Tigers Bruce Pearl squad rose up and won the SEC Tournament yeah. Championship, first time since 1985. Impressive last couple of weeks run for the Auburn Tigers. Very impressive what they did today. Start to finish, dominated that game. Okay, from the Western Athletic Conference, they're going to meet the number 12 seed, the Aggies from New Mexico State, who ran away with the WAC regular season title and overwhelmed Grand Canyon in the WAC Tournament Championship game, 30-4 and four on the year for New Mexico State. The third team out of the Big 12 is the fourth seed, and that's the Kansas Jayhawks. Coach Bill Self, 21 straight NCAA tournament appearances. Kansas a four seed, but in the Midwest, which means if they get out of the first weekend, they're playing in Kansas City as a home game. Interesting uh, decision. That's going to be a point of conversation if they're around that long, and I'm not sure they will be. All right, they'll play the number 13 seed. The Huskies out of Northeastern, the Colonial Athletic Conference. The Huskies knocked off top seed Hofstra in the tournament final. These Huskies have some bite now. This is a team that shoots it well, defends at a high level. Kansas will have everything they want in trying to beat that squad. All right, let's go to the bottom of the half of the bracket. These are first and second round games to take place in Tulsa on Friday and on Sunday. Fourth team out of the Big 12, Iowa State's Cyclones, the number six seed. They won their second Big 10 tournament or Big 12 tournament title in three years. They beat Kansas and they will meet the number 11 seed, Ohio State's Buckeyes, the seventh team out of the Big Ten. Coach Chris Holtman has led the Buckeyes to the NCAA tournament in his first two years. It's a Ohio bubble State. team, man. Clark, you want to take this one? <laughs> <laughs> Thrilled to see the Buckeyes there as a double-digit seed. They'll have their hands full with this high-octane Iowa State team. As a matter of fact, I think Iowa State team is a dark horse to break up a bracket because of how they can score and what they showed defensively here in winning the Big 12 championship. Okay, at the number three seed, we have our fourth team out of the American Athletic, and it's the Houston Cougars. Coach Kelvin Sampson leading the Cougars to a school record 31 wins or 29 in the regular season 31 and 3 overall they won their first conference regular season title since 1992 they'll meet number 14 seed 
Georgia State, the Panthers, out of the Sun Belt. Well, we saw the kind of excitement they can bring to a ball game. Yeah, they shoot the three extreme, 40% from the three, and they've got five guys that shoot over 40% from three-point range. All right, let's round out this Midwest bracket. First and second round games in Jacksonville on Thursday and Saturday. Wofford's Terriers out of the Southern Conference come into the tournament on a 20-game win streak after winning the Southern Conference. That's a pretty Conference good seed there. I thought they'd be in that neighborhood. How about you, Seth? That's on the north end of the neighborhood, but okay. that's a pretty respectable neighborhood. Yes, it I'm is. Glad, I'm glad the committee had that much respect for Wofford. They certainly earned it. And you guys also feel they'll be great representatives. Yeah, they will, no doubt. Outstanding team, and then Fletcher McGee have one of the most lethal three-point shooters, but he's not alone. There's a good team there, the Terriers. All right, they're going to meet the number 10 seed Pirates of Seton Hall, the second team out of the Big East. Top 25 wins over Kentucky, beat Marquette twice, and Villanova, that's part of their reservation. And in Miles Powell, they've got a guy, little fellow who's dynamic, putting the ball in the basket. And the last matchup in the Midwest region, the sixth SEC contender, the Kentucky Wildcats, the number two seed. For, for how many weeks did we have them pegged as a number one seed? Right in the neighborhood. And again, we talked about it all, turn, all, all month long, really. The top eight pretty solidly distinguished, and it was just a matter of which line those eight were going to fall on. Tied for second during the SEC's regular season. They will meet the 15th seed Wildcats of Abilene Christian out of the Southland Conference. They beat New Orleans in the Southland Tournament Championship. Abilene Christian comes in with 27 and 6. So, back to the top of the Midwest region. Supposedly ruled by North Carolina. What do you think? Well, I tell you, I'm looking ahead to a potential Utah State-North Carolina matchup in that second round. That would be a tantalizing 1-8 matchup. Utah State has size. They've got scoring. I think that would be a really intriguing matchup and there. I think a very dangerous team here is New Mexico State. I love teams that have won all year. They're 30 and 5, 15 and 1 Chris Chances clubs. I think they actually will beat Kansas in the second round and make it to the Sweet 16. So we're not going to have that well, you're fun. Up on oh, these the controversy. Well, you Bottom know. half of the bracket. You can't ignore Kentucky. No, you certainly can't. You cannot ignore Kentucky, nor can you ignore Seton Hall. Yeah, and uh, Kentucky could play Seton Hall in the second round, but I actually like Wofford uh, to beat uh, Seton Hall in that game, and that'd be a great matchup for Wofford and Kentucky. Kentucky's playing great basketball. I think it's going to be a Kentucky-North Carolina rematch in the Elite Eight. Wouldn't that we be are running out of regions. A couple of teams still waiting to find out where they're going, including Prairie View A&M, who beat Texas Southern to play in the Southwestern Athletic Conference title, along with Gonzaga, Texas Tech, last year's national runners-up, Michigan. We'll let you know when we return and reveal the West Region live on the election show after this. The NCAA CBS and Turner would like to recognize and thank our official NCAA corporate champions and corporate partners for their ongoing support of the NCAA and NCAA student athletes throughout the year. Welcome back, everyone. Three brackets down, one to go. Several fan bases still waiting to see where and if their teams make it into the field of 68. So let's get to it. Here's the final region of the tournament brackets from the NCAA and its corporate champions as we reveal the West region. The fourth overall number one seed is Gonzaga, the Bulldogs, a number one seed for the third time in their history, for the second time in the last three years. Interesting that uh, on the overall seed line, it looks like North Carolina is ahead of uh, Gonzaga sliding down to the four, even though Carolina lost in the semis of the ACC tournament. That surprises me a little bit. The Bulldogs, who are there every single year and a tough out in the tournament at all times. All right, let's talk first and second round action in Salt Lake City in the West. These are Thursday and Saturday games. Gonzaga, the top seed, they will meet the winner of the first four game in Dayton on Tuesday between the Knights of Fairleigh Dickinson out of the Northeast. The Knights go back to the NCAA tournament by beating St. Francis in the NEC tournament finals. They will meet in Dayton. The Panthers of Prairie View A&M out of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Panthers going to their first NCAA tournament since 1998 after winning the SWAC tournament title. That's a high-scoring, explosive group. Doesn't have a lot of size, but they've got a lot of firepower. All right, the number eight seed in the West. The Orange of Syracuse, six team out of the ACC. Coach Jim Beheim, 34 NCAA tournament appearances. They will meet the ninth seed, Baylor Bears, the fifth team out of the Big 12. Baylor, 19-13 on the year. First and second round games in Hartford, Connecticut on Thursday and Saturday. Our third Big East team is the Golden Eagles of Marquette. 
Big East regular season title. Finished one game behind the Wildcats and the Golden Eagles as a number five seed in the West are ready to go. Who do they meet? Well, they'll, have a, they'll have a little bit of a task. The second team out of the Ohio Valley, the Racers of Murray State, shared the regular season Ohio Valley Conference title with Belmont and then beat them in the tournament finals. So Murray State at 27 and 4. So we get John Moran against Marcus Howard, which is great. But the important thing here to know is, again, bubble teams go into the 11 or the 12 seed, which means we're still waiting on those last two, team, two teams in on the first four. They'll be on the 11 seed when we slide this bracket. All right, number four seed in the West, the seventh team out of the ACC, the Seminoles of Florida State. After a 1-4 start in conference play, Boy, they just rolled, reeled off all kinds of victories. I think that Gonzaga comes out of this region, but if somebody else, if there's a dark horse for me, it's the Florida State Seminoles. Deep, athletic. And the only question is, can they make enough shots when they need to? But that's a team that you got to keep an eye on. All Very right. dangerous. Who, who are they playing? They're playing the Catamounts of Vermont out of the America East and the number 13 seed in the West region. Two NCAA tournament appearances in the last three seasons for Vermont comes in at 27 and 6 on the year. Now, first and second round games in Tulsa on Friday and Sunday. From the Mid-American, Buffalo's How about Bulls, that? the number six seed. They won the Mid-American regular season and tournament championships. The highest seed for a team from the MAC since the field expanded. No team had been seeded higher than eight before. Awesome work and well done by the blue collar Bulls from Buffalo. All right, first four game in Dayton, Ohio, Wednesday. Who will they meet? It'll be a matchup between the Sun Devils of Arizona you State, go, Seth. The number 11 seed, and the third Pac-12 team into the tournament. Chris Mullen and Bobby Hurley, it was a long wait to get to this point in the show, but you are in the tournament. Those are the last two at-large teams in the tournament. Chris Mullen took St. John's to four NCAA tournaments as a player, gets into their first tournament since 2015. The number three seed in the West, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech in the sixth team out of the Big 12. First regular season title since 1990 six when they played in the Southwest Conference. So Texas Tech on their way. One of my favorite players in the country, Jared Culver, leads the Red Raiders. And number 14 seed in the West out of the Horizon League, Northern Kentucky. The North beat top seeded Wright State to win the Horizon League Tournament Championship. Now, first and second round games in Des Moines, Iowa on Thursday and Saturday. The number seven seed, the Wolfpack of Nevada. Won the Mountain West regular season title. They're the second team out of the Mountain West, and they will take on the Florida Gators, the 10 seed in the West, our seventh SEC team. The Gators knock off top seed LSU in the SEC quarterfinals. And at the bottom of the list, the number two seed, the Michigan Wolverines, came up just short in the Big Ten championship game tonight. They're the eighth team out of the Big Ten conference. They opened the season on a 17-game winning streak. They ended it strong as well. And they will face the Grizzlies of Montana out of the Big Sky. Montana won the Big Sky regular season and tournament championship and come into this tournament with a record of 26 and 8. So there is your field. And let's go back to the top and take a look and see who Gonzaga has to contend with down the road. Well, Florida State is in that region, as you can see. And again, the Seminoles dangerous. This Vermont team has been outstanding for several years and good to see them back in the tournament. Yeah, interesting. A couple of the power conference teams who did not get in in TCU, Texas, and NC State. So the committee did value uh, some of these mid-major candidates. I think this is a pretty good path for Gonzaga. They lost to Florida State in last year's mm -hmm. tournament, mm -hmm. but that was the one where Killian Tilly got hurt. And then as far as the bottom half of this bracket, I think Buffalo is the team to watch. I just think Texas Tech is playing so well right now. Clark scoring the ball. I actually like Texas Tech to beat Michigan in the Sweet 16, go to the Elite Eight, lose to Gonzaga. Okay, I hear you. You've got it mapped out. That's <laughs> what a bracketologist does. All right, guys, the bracket's <laughs> now complete. We turn our attention to the teams that barely made the field and the teams that barely missed the field. Belmont, Temple, Arizona State, St. John's, pretty accurate from what we predicted earlier. No question. I mean, you have probably minutes. eight to ten teams that you're looking at for probably three to four spots, and these teams were all in that conversation, and it becomes a matter of what the committee chooses when they go into the voting booth, and no issues at all here because, again, when you get the, as Seth likes to always say, if you played yourself into that position, right. then there's not really much room for you to whimper and complain. And teams that were close but not making the tournament, 
UNC Greensboro, Alabama, TCU, and Indiana. Seth. Yeah, and again, those uh, teams all lost considerable number of games in their own power conferences. UNC Greensboro, you know, the fact that it looks like, I don't know if they're the first team out, but they're even on this list, uh, a great accomplishment for them. Just not enough quality wins. So I think the committee basically, you know, kind of split the difference here. They got Belmont in, but they were did not reach as deep into the power conference well as maybe some people were expecting. I think that's pretty, I'm sorry for those teams that didn't get in. Sure, no but doubt. But I, I think that's a good strategy, a good place to land where they did. Okay, you have no argument, Clark. None at all, because again, it's very, there's a thin line. But when you're looking at the teams that were in that last four in, last four out conversation, I think the committee landed in the right spot. All right, here's how the conferences broke down, the ones that earned multiple bids. And here's how it looks. Eight teams out of the Big Ten, seven out of the ACC, seven out of the SEC. And then the Big 12 is next with six. Uh, that's pretty much the way you guys thought it would be. Isn't I'm it? looking at my notes from earlier today, and I had about that way in terms of the power six, clearly when you take a look at what transpired there. Now, seven non-Power 6 teams earned an at-large invitation, Seth. Yeah, but I, I, I go back to that list of the teams that didn't get in when you talk about Oregon winning the Pac-12 yeah. and St. Mary's Bubble winning squeezers. the West, Confer yeah. West Coast Conference and then VCU losing in the A-10. So those were three spots. Right. That, that graphic that we showed up, three of those teams would have been in the field, but for those results, that's why it's March Madness. All right, guys, now that the bracket is set, time to take time out to play Infinity's Bracket Pool Challenge where every registered bracket nets a donation to Coaches versus Cancer. Learn more at infinitytimeout.com. Up next, we'll talk live with the man who oversaw this year's selection process, the chair of the NCAA Men's Basketball Selection Committee, Bernard Viewer. As we step aside, a few more joyous celebrations. Welcome back, everyone. Here's a look at the top four seeds by region. As you take a look, Duke and Michigan State leading the way in the east. Gonzaga and Michigan in the west. Over in the south, you got Virginia and Tennessee, along with Purdue and Kansas State. And in the Midwest, North Carolina is the top seed. Kentucky, Houston, and Kansas filling them out. For some insight into this year's selection and bracketing process, joining us now is Bernard Muir, the chair of the NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Committee and the director of athletics at Stanford University. First of all, congratulations to you. Um, I, I asked you off camera, I'll ask you on. Was it everything you thought it would be? It was a tremendous week. Uh, all my colleagues, the 10 members of us getting together, talking basketball, watching basketball, and then coming out with this bracket. Uh, just, just a tremendous week, and we're glad we're ready to kick it off. Any hesitation at all about putting three teams out of the four in the same, you know, from the same conference, the ACC. You know, they earn their right to, to be there, and and uh, certainly with Duke and, and Zion back, uh, phenomenal run here in the ACC tournament, and we thought both Duke, Virginia, and North Carolina were deserving on that one line. Looking at the Big Ten Conference Championship game today, how close perhaps was Michigan State, and how did that game play into what ultimately happened with the committee selections? Well, great question. Michigan State, uh, they leapfrogged Kentucky uh, by winning this, this game. They had so many great quad one wins. Uh, but at the same token, we thought Michigan State and Michigan would be on that two line uh, once the, the weekend unfolded. Gotcha. Tell me about the Belmont conversation. <laughs> so Belmont, interesting. They, you know, they made the most of the opportunities that they had. They had two wins in, in, the, in quad one. Um, and we just thought that they were a phenomenal basketball team. Very high on the offensive front, uh, great offensive efficiency, and we thought if deserving, they, they belong in the field. And so that leads to my question about the net. Uh, do you have a sense of how much the net factored into what we're seeing here? Well, I, I would say this, the, the net allowed for more quality one wins, especially when we looked at the number of conferences that fall in that quad one seg segment. And certainly Belmont, uh, among others, uh, certainly racked up some qu qu quad one wins. And th that's what we found pretty impressive. But now we're looking at the results of the deliberations. What was the tough part? What, what, what were the major hurdles that your guys faced? Uh, you mentioned it earlier. I think it was just those last teams in, uh, very few spots left. And and there are many teams that just, it's such a fine line uh, that looked so much like themselves, uh, like others. And in the end, uh, we ended up putting in a, a great field and St. John's was the last team in. No. Go ahead, Clark. No. Well, one of the things, one of the things that I know that, that we talked about before when, when you visited us earlier, uh, whether injuries and coaching situations affect 
the status of teams. Did they this time around? We we certainly discussed them, but we wanted to see how teams played played out. So I can think of like LSU and and Smart coming back. Uh, they were impressive. Certainly Zion at Duke uh, and, and Ward at, at Michigan State. We were just trying to see, okay, exactly how are these teams going to play uh, when these when these student athletes come back? And obviously, they played really well and they played themselves into the field. And, and as far as the power conference teams that were left out, uh, Alabama, for example, had a win over Kentucky. Uh, Indiana had all kinds of injury issues. North Carolina State had a very high net rating, I think, in the in the yeah. low 30s, although a bad non-conference strength of schedule. It seems to me in the past. The determining factor was a number of quality wins, but that maybe this year the, the multitude of losses more outweighed that. Is that fair to say? That's f totally fair to say. Uh, the, they had so many opportunities. What did they do with those opportunities? And in some cases, uh, like in NC State, they had great opportunities in quad one, but just did not win win them. And so that was a concern for us. What do you think? Uh, and Clark has, Clark has, has been pushing, and, and actually so has said about the mid-majors and, and their prominence in the tournament. Do you feel that they've made strides? Well, this year we had 11 conferences, a, a, a third of the overall 32 conferences that we have in Division One that had multiple teams in, yeah, in the bracket. Right, and, right. and they were deserving, and we thought they belonged there. Uh, this was a high year for us. I think last last three years, it was nine, nine conferences that had multiple teams. So we, we were fortunate. We had opportunities, especially that fell our way, that we could get more teams, uh, deserving teams, into the, into the field. Going back to Michigan and Michigan State, talking about how they were solidly on the two line, is that a function of balancing the field in some regards in terms of looking at those top four lines and at seeing where you can get really good solid strength across those four absolutely lines. and coming into the week we we thought there was probably six or seven deserving teams of which michigan and michigan state were considered for that one line mm -hmm. in the end we thought boy there's only four spots left only four spots available and we thought the teams that we put there were most deserving mm -hmm. bernard thank you thank you job well done appreciate it we appreciate it too and caa tournament coverage begins with the first four on tuesday and wednesday at 6 p.m eastern time on true tv fairly dickinson takes on prairie view a m belmont faces temple on tuesday while north dakota state gets nc central and arizona state plays st john's on wednesday first and second round action tips thursday through next sunday on cbs tbs tnt and true tv the sweet 16 and elite eight will be on cbs and tbs it all culminates in Minneapolis with the Final Four and the National Championship game here on CBS. We remind you, you can watch all NCAA tournament games on March Madness Live. When the selection show continues, the Final Four forecast. Clark and Seth predict the four teams headed to Minneapolis. He's going to be wearing the glass slipper as well. All of that and much, much more after the break. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Selection Show is sponsored by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Great taste, zero sugar. And by AT&T. More for your thing. That's our thing. UMBC makes history. The shocker of all shockers. You must be Cinderella. Wow. We kind of all wanted to be in the one shining moment video. In the locker room, we're all singing the first line because that's all we know. But I think we're going to have to learn the rest of the song, too. The NCAA tournament has been turned upside down. UMBC's monumental upset of Virginia was the first and only time a 16 seed defeated a one seed. The one seed is now 135 and one against the 16. Number two seeds are 128 and eight in first round matchups, while the 8-9 game is literally a coin toss with each winning half of the games played. That's the way it's supposed to be. Right? <laughs> That's right. All right, yeah. let's, let's run through the brackets one more time. The blue numbers to the right of the team's names are their overall tournament seed. Let's begin in the upper left where Duke is the number one overall seed, Clark, in the East. Yeah, you know, you look at Duke, and I think Duke gets to Minneapolis. Um, they're an outstanding team playing at a high level. You take a look at some teams that I think could surprise. I like Liberty. I love the Liberty Flames. I like their balance. I like their three-point shooting and their defense. Mississippi State has been hot and cold defensively. They've got high-octane offense, but I like Liberty 
to grab a grab an upset there in that 5-12 matchup. And we talk about overall seeding mat mat mattering. Uh, you know, Michigan State being the six instead of the five means they they are able to be paired with number one overall seed. And I think those two teams are on a collision course uh, for the Elite Eight. Uh, I think uh, Virginia Tech is a team to watch, probably because they've already beaten Duke this season from the same conference, getting their point guard back. Of course, Duke did not have Zion uh, Williamson for that game. But, you know, I'm the upset guy. Yes, you're yeah, you are. The I'm normally you. very tame about picking upsets on television, but I'm going to give you <laughs> liberty uh, to come out of that 12-5 game. The 12-5 spot is the one where over 75% of the NCAA tournaments, you see the 12 beating a five. I think that's what happens uh, in here. But I also think that Belmont is going to beat Maryland and uh, move on as well. All right, let's move down the left side of the bracket, which is headlined by Gonzaga, the one seed in this region and number four overall. Yeah, exactly. And I think Gonzaga gets to Indy Minneapolis as well. I love the balance of this team. Getting Kelly and Tilly back should be helpful to them. Um, Buffalo's a team that six seed is well-earned and well-deserved. They'll be challenged by whoever comes out of that Arizona St. John's. John's game, but a Buffalo Texas Tech matchup is one I'm looking forward to. Murray State takes out Marquette. Pick out a oh, look at you. Yes, yes, picking yes. the 12 over a five. I'll be a little bit more tame in this one. I like the Florida Gators to get by Nevada. That's going to be my upset special there. Florida lost a lot of close games in the SEC. Yes, so they control and they pace defend, and they're a good defensive team. All right, let's jump to the top of the right side of the bracket, where Virginia is the number two overall seed and the team to beat in the South region. As we start, Clark. UC Irvine is the team that I like the best. The Anteaters to surprise Kansas State. You're saying, are you saying Virginia is not going to make it to Minneapolis? No, I, I had to be short this time. I only had a 10 second <laughs> You're never going to be short. He's never going to be short. <laughs> I'm the short one here. Okay. I'm going to take for my upset special. I do like UC Irvine. Uh, not only to win that one, but I think they're a Sweet 16 team. And also, Oregon is maybe the hottest team in the country right wow. now. And uh, I think they're going to beat a beat-up Wisconsin squad uh, in that first And round. finally, we slide down to the lower right, where North Carolina is the one seed and third overall. And I've got Houston coming out of that region. If there's a team that could upset the apple cart, the Iowa State um, Cyclones have played really well to winning that Big 12 championship. But I've got Houston making their way to Minneapolis. Greg wants me to take Iona to destroy what I, whatever's <laughs> left of my credibility. I'm not going to do it, Greg Gumbel, but I will give you the Aggies of New Mexico State. I love teams that win, win, win. Winning is a habit. I know Auburn coming in hot, winning the SEC tournament, but I think the Aggies, and, I, and again, I think Kansas is limping to the finish line, and I think the Aggies have a great chance to beat the Jayhawks and be a Sweet 16 team. Final four? My Final Four team. Well, I got out of the East. We're going to have the Duke Blue Devils. And then uh, they're going to beat Michigan State in the uh, regional final there. In the West, I like Gonzaga to beat Texas Tech. In uh, the South region, I'm going with the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue, please, they haven't been in the Final Four since 1980. I'm begging you, get there. I think they will. And then Kentucky. And, of course, we deserve a Duke-Kentucky championship game. The Blue Devils are your champion. All one seeds other than the Houston Cougars. And I like Gonzaga to win it all. Wow. Well, we already discussed some double-digit seeds that could win. We'll see what turns out after the round of 64. There's bracket busters. There's last year's Loyola team. Figure out who the heck is going to turn up a Cinderella this year. We really don't know. At least not yet. That's it. All right. We had an hour to reflect on the bracket. We will uh, get about... Doing the business of the tournament coming up this week. We hope you will join us. Thanks for joining us here on the Selection Show. Selection Sunday coverage continues at the top of the hour over on CBS Sports Network with NCAA March Madness Bracket Breakdown. That's at 7 Eastern, only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Tonight on CBS begins with 60 minutes and a trip to Monaco, followed by new episodes of God Friended Me, NCIS Los Angeles, and Madam Secretary. That's tonight, only CBS. For Clark, for Seth, for all of us here at CBS Sports, Greg Gumbel. Thank you for joining us tonight. Everybody.